So welcome to all you awake and ready souls, ready to dive into the deep end of the pool. Do you remember the first time you ever dove into the deep end of the pool? When you were brave enough, when, when you dared to, to leave the security of the shallow end? And if you remember, in, in most pools, there was always like a, uh, a, a rope, a buoy, that separated the two. I've never thought of this before. This is just coming to me just now. And, and your parents always told you, you always stay to this side of, of that rope because there's a drop off and you don't know how to swim. So don't go to the other side. But, but one day you figured, I know how to swim. I'm a big boy. I'm a big girl. I can do it. And so you, you, without anyone noticing, you, you went underneath the, the rope. And what did you do? You just paddled. You paddled to stay atop the water. Now, at this point, you're no longer paddling to stay atop. If you're in the deep end of the pool, what's the best thing to do? Die. You're in the deep end of the pool. We're not here to tread water. We're not here to try and get this intellectually. We're not here to learn something. We're here to unlearn everything. Mm. To unlearn everything. So no more treading. No more just simply trying to stay afloat. Let's dive together. Sound good? Okay. So I have something that I, I, I wrote this morning that I, I wanted to begin with. And it starts with a line that is one of those lines that uh, is confusing to the intellectual or split mind, but will hopefully open a door. Here it is. I am wrong about everything until, until I am right about one thing. Think about that for a second. I'm wrong about everything until I'm right about one thing. You see, if I'm wrong about one thing, which is that the idea that I am separate from all that is or separate from God, guess what? I'm wrong about everything. Because it is from that one idea that springs my perception of the whole world. If I believe that I'm separate from you, from God, from everything, that I'm going to be wrong about everything that I see. But the moment I am right about one thing, that I am one with God, I am one with reality. I am the holy, perfect child of God, complete and healed and whole, shining in the reflection of God's love. As soon as I'm right about that one thing, Everything else falls into natural order, and I'm right with everything. That line yesterday came into my mind. See, there it goes. It struck me as like that, an awakening bomb of consciousness. Meant to disrupt, absolutely meant to disrupt the cycle of the perceptual mind which thinks is right about everything. That's one thing we can be assured of. It sure thinks it's right, but it's wrong about everything until I get that one thing. So listen to this. Every element of a dream reflects something experienced in the waking state. We know that, right? But only as a metaphor representing some aspect of who you are outside the dream. Any of you who have done any dream work or dream study know that everything that you experience when you're asleep and dreaming is really a metaphor of you, something about your waking state. So some other person who is playing some role is actually representing some aspect of you. See, now, let's just say amen every time that happens. Amen. Join me. Okay. That, that'll be our call. Remember to say amen. So everything we experience is a metaphor. If anyone wants to hold this one, I'm sure he would be very grateful. He is freaking out from the bombs. Go over to Larry. 
Mary will hold you. There we go. That's the thing about the bombs. The animals do not like it. They do not understand. Okay, so let me read this line one more time. Every element of a dream reflects something experienced in the waking state, but only as a metaphor representing some aspect of who you are outside the dream. A metaphor is not real, but a symbol of reality. And so it is with the world you mistake for reality. Everything you experience here declares who you claim to be. Once again, everything, let's be resolute about this. Everything you experience here in perception declares who you claim to be. But none of them are your actual reality or who you really are outside the dream of separation. Makes perfect sense. When, you, when that experience begins to dawn or when you find yourself in the deep end of the pool. This is why projection makes perception. This is what we were talking about yesterday. Projection, what I project is always going to create the world that I perceive. Amen. Okay. Until you have a direct experience of your one reality, or as you were created by God, perfect, whole, and complete, you will continue to project images of your split self. You will continue to project images of your split self. Amen. That you identify as people or situations outside of your reality. That's important. Until you come into a direct experience of your one self, you'll continue to project aspects of your split self onto everyone that you come in contact with. I think we're all at the point where we can at least grasp that on some level. Now the question is, amen. What do we do with that? How do we integrate that into the awakening rather than dreaming even deeper dreams? Okay. Amen. None of them are who you claim just as you are not who you claim to be outside the mind of God. Just as you are not who you claim to be outside the mind of God. God is one. Amen. God is one. And so shall you be in your true self, which is beginning at last to eclipse all the strange ideas of, amen, all the strange ideas of limitation that you have claimed until now. Isn't that wonderful? What is happening in your mind, amen, is beginning to eclipse all the strange ideas of limitation that you have claimed until now. So, all amen. Come on, how many amens do we need? All I'm asking you to do is relax and let this shift from the split reality to oneself happen without effort. You see, we don't need all of the explosions anymore. <laughs> they, they may have served a purpose when we were young and innocent and childlike. We thought it was fun. We don't need it anymore. No effort is required to be who you have. Now it's coming from this side. No effort is required to be who you have always been. Can I get an amen on that? So embrace that reality now, just as it forever embraces you. Now the bands are starting. Boy, they are. They are either really feeling what we're putting out, or it's Halloween, one of the two. So that being said, I, I want to read just a little bit of, of Lesson 95 from A Course in Miracles, which is, I am oneself, united with my 
creator. Isn't that all we need to know? You get that one that one line, I am one self, united with my creator. The experience of that one line is all you need to break free from the illusion of split mind into reality. So this is from that lesson. You are one self, united and secure in light and joy and peace. So far, so good. You are God's son, one self with one creator and one goal to bring awareness of this oneness to all minds, to bring awareness of this oneness to all minds, that true creation may extend the allness and the unity of God. You are one self, complete and healed and whole, with power to lift the veil of darkness from the world and let the light in you come through to teach the world the truth about you, the truth about yourself. I am one self, united with my creator. Say that with me. I am one self. United with my creator. Take a deep breath. Just breathe that in. That one reality. Say it again. I am one self. United with my creator. Breathe that in. One more time. I am one self. United with my creator. And so it is. And so it will always be. So it cannot change. Because that's just who you are. It really is that simple. It's who you are. So stop trying to be something else. Stop trying to be split off from everything that is real. When all you're really doing is splitting off from yourself. There's no need that the need to split off from you has vanished and has been replaced by the love that you are and will always be. Give me an amen to that one. Amen. All right. So, Victoria, let's have you come on and tag team from there. Okay, Brother James. Good morning, everybody. Happy oh, look at you. Oh, yes. I'm ready for, we have a kid's parade. Here's my magic wand, right? I'm a fairy from the elemental kingdom <laughs> and I'm on my way to the parade. But, um, and then as you were saying that, you know, I have a veil on, can you see this veil? It's a cape, it's very light. Amen. Right, amen. And it's just got stars on it. And that's how light I feel the veil is now between us and the everything of us. And if we just let it, it the, the light comes right through it, just like the light of our one self comes right through. However dense we think of ourselves in these body costumes, the light cannot help but come through when we accept and recognize that's all we are. So the other thing I, I wanted to pick up on was when you were talking about any one true thought, any one thought that we stick to, that we use, I am one self, my father and I are one, whatever whatever true thought we latch on to, Jesus, I trust in you, Father, thy will be done, there's many of them. It doesn't matter which one, it matters because they're all reflecting the same wholeness. It's one aspect that perhaps each of us identifies with that we can give ourselves to fully, consistently, no matter what. And what I'm seeing is that one aspect is showing up everywhere. I was in a friend's meeting house the other day and I picked up a pamphlet. It's in the other room, I should have brought it. A pamphlet from the world conference that the friend's meeting Quaker Association is having this year in Africa. And the whole theme of their 
uh, their gathering for the year is oneness, family. It's They call it Ubuntu, the spirit of Ubuntu. And some of you will know that. It's that African word, like aloha. It's more than a word. It's like aloha is everything. I see the God in you. I see the God in everything. Namaste is. Ubuntu is the same kind of word. It's a word that is the fulfillment of on earth as it is in heaven, that we are one. I am one self united with not only my creator, but all of creation. And so that's the word they're using through their whole association around the world. That's the theme. What a wonderful theme. We're brothers and sisters of one family. That's enough to get us home. That would be enough because underneath every single um, word or thought or tool any of us pick up is a common experience. And that common experience, no matter how we slice it and dice it, is always an experience of love, isn't it? No matter how, Jesus, I trust in you, Father, thy will be done. God, what is your, your word for me today? Whatever it is we turn to, it, oh, it's a dependency on love. It's a dependency with abandon. That's the idea. Because abandon here just means letting go of all our defenses. Just let them go. The defense is about everything. Do what we're called to do. Go where we're called to go. But go freely, not with dependency. Go to the doctor if you have a doctor appointment. Go to a lawyer if you have a legal thing. But go freely, not dependent on what some outcome of some test is, what some court order might be. Go freely that you belong to love. We belong to love. And that's what we rest in. And then all of these forms are ways to join and bless, to comfort, to heal, to bless. That's what we're here for. If we depend on love, love alone, and let it be that simple, like you were saying, James, it is this simple. The ego wants to complicate it, make us think we have to do more things to get to it. But that's why always right now, we can depend on love. Right now, if I'm having trouble breathing, right now, let me breathe a breath of love right now. And so be it. If it's my last physical breath, it won't matter because I'm not a body. My breath will be love. Love will be my experience, my body, my everything. Let love be the final answer and let it be the first answer. As soon as anything comes up, if we abandon ourselves to love, <clears throat> no matter what appears before us, it's that one ray of light that that centers us back to where we came from, back to our source, back to spirit, back to the one light that we are, that we all are. And that's all we wanna do. Let the world reflect the light. Oh, it was in today's lesson, that line. Perception is not a fact, perception is a mirror. I was so glad to read it this morning. Perception is a mirror. Well, let it mirror the light of our being that is love. Let perception mirror it everywhere we go so that we're not afraid to face anything. That's the other side of this. We have to look at everything because whatever we're looking at is a past belief that we held on to as an identity. Don't be afraid to look at it. Everything has to be looked at, has to be faced, and has to be ultimately laughed at. It can't hurt me. It's not the boss of me. Love is the boss of me. Love is what I give to, what I surrender to, what I choose in every moment. So I'm not afraid to look at anything. Fear without opposite, joy without opposite. That's our natural state. So happy Halloween. We've been pretending to be bodies in a world of a lot of bombs and separation. And some of the bombs mean celebrate and some of the bombs mean and time to go. So whatever it is, none of it was so. Let the mirror of our minds reflect the light and the love. Thanks, Brother James. I love you. I love you all. Thank, Thank you, you, Vicky, as always. So fear is not the boss of me. Maybe that's all we need. Only love, only love, only love. No matter what explosions are happening around us, we keep coming back to that one thought. Only love is real. 
Remember we talked yesterday about the steps, like on a staircase, that bring us to that one experience. There are steps along the way, but they're joyful steps. How could, how could a step that brings you into the experience of only love is real be anything but joyful? So let this be a joyful journey. This is why we're together. We can, we can join in such beautiful, powerful ways as we come into a direct experience of, of everything that Vicky shared, that these lessons share. Only love is real. So just remember, I'm wrong about everything until I'm right about one thing. And that one thing is simply only love is real. And we say together, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. So just a note for all of you, especially those of you who are on, on Zoom. Um, on Sunday, the time does change. Mexico does not change. So we change in relation to every, isn't this interesting? We change in relation to what changes, but we don't change. We hold steady. We have one focus. So what that means is right now, we here at Namaste Village are in mountain time. Starting next week, we'll be in central time. So for all of you who are on Zoom, if you're in, uh, say, where Vicky is, where we she's been starting at 11, it will start at 10, starting uh, next week. Okay. Amen. All right. Namaste, everyone. We love you. Have I a love you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you See so you much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Love you.